I work with a lot of private landowners and practitioners who work in the forest, work on trees, and uh, we see a lot of unsafe behavior out in the forest, particularly using chainsaws, which is an extremely useful tool, but also an extremely dangerous tool if you're using improper technique and safety procedures. My name is Peter Kolb. I'm the Montana State University Extension Forestry Specialist and a forestry professor. And with me is Scott Keen. I'm a certified forester and practicing forestry for about 37 years in Western Montana. Got my start with chainsaws when I was a kid, learned the safety uh, behind them. And when I came to school in Green River, Montana, joined the logger sports team and then turned professional after that. Traveled all over the Northwest competing. My best event was what they call the hot saw. If you can imagine a chainsaw made into a dragster, that's a hot saw. My biggest one was a YZ400 Yamaha, basically a motocross bike that I cut down and made into a chainsaw. With that, I got two world championships and held the world's record for over 20 years. And Scott, that saw would cut through a log that diameter and how fast? The world record I cut was 5.71 seconds through a 30 inch Douglas burr. There's two components to this video. Uh, the first one is about the saw, uh, what features to look at, the safety features, how to maintain it, how to run it, uh, appropriate saws, how to start it, and the proper posture and stances you need to use when you're, when you're holding and running this saw. The second component deals with cutting down trees and cutting them into manageable pieces and all the different hazards uh, and situations you might encounter. We highly recommend that you watch both of these so that you can work safely in the forest and enjoy this wonderful tool and minimize any risks associated with its use. When I first started, you know, 40 years ago, uh, basically we just had the old XL home light chainsaws and they were solid mount and if you ran them for more than an hour, your knuckles were just white and you couldn't even pick up, you know, the chainsaw by the end of the day. Cutting wood has been around for thousands of years. First they started with, um, you know, stones that are sharpened. And then about 100, 150 years ago, uh, the crosscut saws really were developed as the metallurgy got better and better. And through that, they used crosscuts all the way up until the 40s. And about the mid 50s, late 50s, is really when the modern chainsaw was, was developed. And it was heavy, it was loud, it was noisy, but it did the job. Night and day compared to what we see today. I've been using chainsaws for over 35 years. Uh, there's been tremendous advances made in safety features on those saws. The modern saw is lighter, more efficient in cutting, and much safer to use than the saws of just a decade ago. This is the first saw I ever bought in 1979. Uh, worked great, it was state of the art at the time. Um, it's gotten a lot of use off of it. But this saw lacked all safety features. It basically did what it was supposed to do, but it did nothing to protect me as the operator. Historically, when you'd use these saws, if you touch the tip on something while you were sawing, they had a tendency to bounce off or, or what was called kick back because of this uh, chain moving at incredibly high speed on here. This would often result in horrific injuries to your face or shoulder as this would kick back on a person. So the chain break was invented. It's this feature on front that this saw does not have. And the idea is that if this kicks back, your hand hits that, that lever, which Scott, you wanna show how that works? Basically it's an internal component. This is the clutch and as it's spinning around, as soon as you hit that, there's a ring in there that stops that clutch. So if you ever do have an accident and it comes back, that chain will stop before it hits you. Excellent safety feature. Another feature that was added is this handle brake on here that basically to run this saw and depress the throttle, which is this little trigger right here, you have to be depressing this bar with your, with your hand. So if I grab it, now I can depress that and run the accelerator on there and run the saw. If the saw is knocked off my hand, it automatically comes off, uh, this pops up, and it cannot accelerate any further. One of the other things is, it's rubber mounted. In the old saws, your knuckles would just get so sore because it was just solid mounted um, handlebars. These are all rubber mounted, you can run them all day long, and your hands are just fine. 
Another feature I want to quickly mention is the bottom has this metal plate on here. These chains fatigue over time, especially if they're dull, they overheat, they may break. When a chain breaks, it has a lot of momentum, it can wrap itself around you and your hands. So this earlier saw wide open. has nothing there. As you're tensioning the chain, somewhere on the bar, sometimes it's inside here, sometimes it's right here, has a little tensioning device. And as you turn it, it actually moves a little stud in the bar. That's the stud. If you can watch that, and that stud fits into this little hole on the bar. So you can see that little stud moves back, and as you righty-tighty, it moves forward, tensioning that bar. So back and forth. So you tension it, lift up on the bar, take some of that slack out, just snug it. The ideal tension on a cold chain is lift it up and just be able to slip a dime underneath the guides. Come back, snug these back up. Not tight, but good and firm. And then to check your tension, take the back of your bar tool. You put it on the back of the teeth and push forward. Never take your hand and go this way. That's the sharp end. Don't want that. Go behind it, and it should be just nice and smooth. Recheck it, and it should be just a little gap. The other thing you want to watch for is, especially in dirty wood, dirty meaning very powdery style, is the air cleaner. No different than your car or truck. You always got to check your air filter. And your air filters are usually somewhere on the back. Two screws, hold it in, quick turn, off they come. Tap it, or some people carry a little brush, and they can just brush it off, pop it back on. It's about a 10 second procedure, but it makes a big difference on how well your saw runs. One of the new features is the caps. That's your oil cap for your bar. This is your gas. If you give it a little bit of a quarter turn, it'll release the pressure, but won't blow back in your face. Turn a little bit more, and it'll come out. So click, and locks into place. The old style, sometimes they were just screw in, and the vibration would come, would unscrew them, and all of a sudden you'd have hot gas or hot oil on your leg. One of the things, you should never operate a chainsaw unless you have the proper safety equipment. Before you start your saw, an essential component is your own personal body safety protection. So we're gonna start with the most important part, and that's your head. Okay, so we want to protect always your eyes. A chainsaw is moving wood chips around at a tremendous speed, and so you must wear eye protection if you value your eyesight. The one thing too with the hard hat, I know it looks sort of silly, but it will save your life. If you happen to cut dead firewood and you're wedging that over, a limb could come out and at 100 feet, basically it would drive you in the ground, so. And then there's also ear protection. So earplugs, uh, these are, are very cheap. You can buy them in bulk. Now we're gonna move down to our most vulnerable area uh, that's most vulnerable to the bar of the saw with a sharp cutting edge. And these are called saw shaps. Now, 15 years ago, these, what I'm wearing, were state-of-the-art saw shaps. Uh, they're filled with a Kevlar-like material. Your saw can cut through these, but the idea is they will arrest the, the teeth and the chain as it's moving around. Today's are even longer and basically just like a set of an apron. And you can see how much longer they are. They go all the way down to the ankle. They actually have reflective on there um, and basically glow in the dark. So someone out there uh, when you're working in the woods can actually see you. I never start my saw unless I have my shaps on, my eyeglasses on, my hearing protection in, and my hard hat on. When operating a chainsaw, you have to make sure that you're at the top of your game. You want to be well rested, alert, have the physical conditioning to be able to operate a saw. Starting your saw is now the next big step. And actually, before I do that, Notice I'm wearing gloves, okay? Gloves is an added 
uh, safety feature because when you're running a saw, your hands get sweaty and they get slippery. So I like a thin pair of leather gloves. It keeps uh, a good grip. I don't want bulky gloves because I want to have a real strong, firm grip on my saw uh, so that it won't slide. Modern chainsaws start in a two-step procedure. Okay, but what's wrong with this picture is I've got Scott standing right next to me when I'm about ready to start my saw. So Scott, are you comfortable being there when I start this? No. So how far away should you be from me when I'm running a saw? At least a body length or two, just when you're starting. Um, when we're falling trees, we'll talk about that distance, but I should be out at least 10, 15 feet away, just so nothing happens. Before I start, Scott, you're going to move off about 10 feet. So starting procedure is these saws have a two choke setting. To start it, you move the choke all the way down. Now notice I can't push it all the way down. So I need to depress the safety and the trigger all the way. Now I can put it all the way down. This is the initial start spot for most modern chainsaws. Now, the proper way to start a saw is, the preferred method is to put the saw on the ground, put your foot into the rear grip, get on one knee, have a firm grip with your left hand on the front handle and pull the bar. This way when the saw starts, it's anchored, it can't move any place. And the other thing is, we talked about the chain brake. The chain brake should be on. So at this point, my saw is running. I have the chain brake on. I'm gonna leave it on. I'm gonna to move to where I'm going to cut. Say I'm going to cut this tree down. I will position myself so I have a good firm stance. Now I will take the chain brake off and I can start sawing. Okay, when I'm done sawing, I put the chain brake on. To turn the saw off, I move the choke all the way up. Now it will turn itself off, okay? The second way to start a saw is called the crotch method. It's the same process, except for rather than putting the saw on the ground, you start with the choke again, Till the choke pops, move it up, position it, but I anchor the back of the saw between my knees and I grip it with my knees and I hold it tight here. Now the saw can't move anywhere. Make sure the, clutch, the chain brake is on and now the same way and I'm ready to saw. Turn off, to turn off I push that forward. Same procedure. You always, when you start the saw, want to make darn sure that it's either pinned to the ground or firmly anchored. Once you have familiarized yourself with your saw, the safety features, how to start it, the best you, thing you can do is practice with your saw in a controlled situation. Just like any other tool, before you're in, a, in a, an environment where conditions might be less than ideal for cutting, you want to be familiar with how your saw cuts and how you can use it and how comfortable you are operating it. So we have a horizontal log uh, put up on spacers. This is ideal to practice with your chainsaw because it gives you level footing in a controlled situation where you can practice cutting slices off to get a feel for the strength of your saw, the power of your saw, and how it cuts. So whether it's a little saw or a bigger saw, doesn't matter, practice is important. So now it's time for me to start my saw. My chain brake is on. I'll position myself properly, have a good stance, a good posture on the ground so I'm not gonna slip. Once I'm ready to start sawing, I will take the chain brake off, and now I can start sawing through the stem. And as I saw through the stem, I will let the saw do the work for me. The chain itself will pull the blade through the stem. I don't need to rock it, nor do I need to do any sawing motions with my arms that sometimes you might be tempted to do if your bar or your chain is getting dull and it's not cutting properly. So I can cut all the way through this, do it multiple times so that I'm comfortable with how my saw operates, how it cuts, feel the weight, feel the vibration, feel the throttle on it. The second thing I also want to do is you'll be in situations when you're using a chainsaw when you want to cut with the top of your bar. So get also practice putting the bar underneath. Again, a good stance. I'm going to rest the bulk of the chainsaw on my left leg and I can put that bar underneath 
run it and pull up, and that way I can saw with the top of my saw and saw this entire slice off. A lot of times people just go down and buy a chainsaw, whether it's from Home Depot or any of the saw shops, and they really don't give a lot of training. So hopefully this video will uh, explain to them uh, all the safety aspects of the chainsaw, how dangerous it is. If used properly, it's not. It's dangerous, but uh, with the right safety gear, you know, you can actually use it and you know, use it all your life and, and you know, be safe. In summary, we've covered the basics on the components of chainsaw, the safety features, and how to start it. However, this should not be considered a training video on how to use a chainsaw. The best way to learn how to use a chainsaw is under the tutelage of an expert who can guide you through the process, evaluate how you're doing, evaluate what you're doing, and give you feedback. That's the way professional loggers do it as well. So this is uh, just to learn about the safety features and to avoid injury. So, Scott? The next video, we're gonna go from the chainsaw to actually how to fell a tree. We're gonna get in all the safety gear. We're gonna look at, go into how to access a tree, the safety part. So the next video will actually show you how and, and the safety parts of falling a tree. And I didn't catch all of that because I still have my earplugs in. Safety first. <laughs> <laughs>